So now what we'll look, do is we'll look at periodontal indices. So we looked at plaque index indi or plaque indices. We looked at gingival indices, and now we're looking at periodontal indices. And there are two ones, two main ones that I want to note. There are many others, but I'm just going to look at the two main ones. So the first one is PDI, periodontal disease index. Now this is no longer used, so I don't want you to worry too much about this one. But the way they used to do this one was they used the Ramford teeth again. They're all, the teeth are listed um, over here. Three, six, sorry. So the teeth are listed here. And what they did over here was they um, used to look at the dentition with just those, with just these teeth area, and they would assess the dentition, the teeth rather, by um, looking at what the gums looked at and look at and they were also looking at the pockets how deep the pockets were whether any cows that sort of thing so they gave each tooth um, a score from zero to six and then they averaged them to come up with a with a score for pdi and you can see here these are the ranges that they had from zero to six so if they had just gingivitis it would be zero to three but if they had periodontitis it would be somewhere from four to six so depending on the tooth um, that they were looking at, it would be scored appropriately. And there is ranges for gingivitis, ranges for periodontitis, and then they would average the score. That's no longer used, so that's why I don't want you to uh, worry about this too much. Just know that it exists, and they used the RAM for a teeth, and they were given a score of 0 to 3 for gingiva or gingivitis, and 4 to 5 for if there was any pockets or periodontitis, if there were any deep pockets. The one that is used now is CPITN, the Community Periodontal Index of Treatment Needs. And it and I'm linking it with the PSR because the PSR gets incorporated uh, with the, when doing this type of indices. So what you do is you're measuring for actually what this what this whole thing is. This index looks at uh, pockets, bleeding, and plaque, and it also looks at retention factors, which I will um, show you. And sorry, so for retention factors, I want you guys to think about, like, are there any defective margins? Are there, um, like, overhangs and stuff like that? That's retaining plaque. That's retaining calculus. So the way it's done is that they use a CPITN e-probe, which is like this. There's a ball tip, and then there's a black band. And this black band, just as an FYI, the range of this black band is, if it will let me type, okay, 3.5 millimeters to 5.5 .5 millimeters so if you're probing and, and you know your your the gingival margin kind of comes over here that's a 3.5 at the very top of the black band and at the very end of the black band the measurement is 5.5 .5. that's just as an as an fyi so the way this works is you probe each section so each section gets probed with this with the cpitn probe and when you probe each section, you record the highest reading in each section. The highest uh, score in each section is recorded. So when you do a PSR, it kind of looks like this. Um, the PSR kind of looks like this, where this is this is section one, section two, section three, section four, section five, and section six. So you probe section one. You probe the entire dentition from here to here. You probe the entire dentition on section 20, and you record the highest reading. And if the highest reading was a 3, you would put a 3 there. It could be a 2 on section 20. It could be a 3 on section um, 3, and, and so on and so forth. So these are just hypothetical readings that you can get. So let's look at how you, you can get a 3 or how you can get a 2 or how you can get a 3. This is not a 3-millimeter probe index. No, it's a three score. It's a score of three. So let's look at how you can do this. So if I were to probe, oh, and you can even have zero. So zero is also an option as well. If I were to probe in an area and I got um, a code of zero, that means that in this area, first, the band is completely visible. Second, there is no calculus or defective margins, no overhangs or um, any um, defective margins, any bad restorations, and the gums look healthy. If the gums and everything look healthy, there's no bleeding, no calculus, um, you can say that is given a score of zero. So if that was the second, if this was the second here, I would put this as zero for section five. Code one, okay, again, the, the black band is exposed. 
there's no calculus that you would detect. Actually, you know the reason why they have a ball tip at the end of the probe is for calculus detection. You're able to better detect calculus if you have a ball tip at the bottom. So again, you probe over here and you notice that again, there's no calculus, but there is bleeding. Okay, so here there's no bleeding. Here there is bleeding and you can see a little bit of BOP right here. There's some uh, bleeding that you can see that's uh, seeping through over here. So if there is bleeding but no calculus, so in this case, the bleeding must be there because of plaque. Um, you give this person uh, a score of one. So you give this sectant a score of one. So I would put a, a, a one over here, for example, if there was no um, calculus, no detect defective margins, but bleeding. Code two, again, black band is visible, right? We still see the black band in code two, but now you, see, you can detect calculus or you can also see defective margins as well, so overhangs. So this is code two. There's, and because you can see, you can feel calculus, there likely would be bleeding here, but the moment you detect calculus, it becomes a code two. In code zero and code one, there's no calculus detected. Code two, there's calculus detected. Code three, look at the way the band is right now. In code three, the band is partially visible. So if the band is partially visible, that means the readings could be, you know, anywhere from 3.5 millimeter and beyond, but not past the 5.5 millimeter mark. So if you can see half the band, then it's given a code three. And you can see over here, section one and section three have been given the code three because I, when I did it, I thought that, that or I noticed that half the band was, um, was, was visible. And so the way you do it is you probe the entire sections Okay, so in this case, it's the anterior. So you probe the entire anterior section, okay, and then the deepest code gets put in here. So in, in this case, for example, if I were to probe the entire anterior section, this perhaps was my deepest reading. Everywhere else, it wasn't as deep. And because this was my deepest reading for that section, that code, that three, gets put in. Okay, so in this case, I put it in section one and section three. Here, we see it on section two. Code four, code four, do you see the band at all? I don't see the band. And so when the band is completely gone, it's not visible, it automatically becomes code four. And then sometimes we'll put an asterisk. So for example, if I get a code three and sometimes I might put an asterisk right beside the, um, the number. And the reason why the asterisk is put in is because perhaps there was a vacation. I could see a vacation, so I'm gonna give an asterisk. Um, perhaps there was mobility. There's lots, of, the teeth were mobile. Maybe there was like recession, okay, that the gums didn't look healthy. The gums were, had lots of problems such as severe recession. And if there, there is recession, like loss of recession like this, you would put an asterisk. So that's what the asterisk is for. So now that you've done the PSR for the dentition, for the, your client's mouth, now you can assess for the, you can check the CPITN. Now you can check the treatment needs. And so this is the criteria the CPITN's criteria for identifying the treatment needs. So if you look over here, I see code zero, three. And when I see the highest code is three, automatically I know that this person has complex, um, you know, a complex perio, possibly, you know, severe perio or moderate to severe perio, and will need periodontal therapy, possibly even surgery. So they probably would need to see a periodontist too. But if I had another PSR, if I did a PSR uh, for another client, and let's say I got two, one, two, two, one, two. Remember, two means that the, I, I detected calculus, but I did not detect any deep pockets. So if, I, if this was my PSR, and I, the highest reading I got was a two, right? That means that this person would need scaling and replaning, so they would need debridement, and possibly if they had overhangs, that also needs to be corrected as well. So we look at the highest code on the PSR, and based on the highest code, we will then decide what type of treatment they need. So PSR is basically a quick way of uh, probing. I mean, of course, full mouth probing is always ideal, but in a community setting, because we're seeing so many individuals and we're trying to assess the population, assess what their needs are, it will be so much easier and faster to do a PSR where you just probe each sectant and you record the highest code for a sectant, and then you can then determine what their treatment needs are. Okay, the next video will look at dental caries index.